<clears throat> Ladies, gentlemen, and non-binaries, we're finally in fucking frame. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are all doing really well. Today we are finally going to be looking at a movie that I honestly was tossing up between doing a video on or not, but I finally decided I would and it's on 365 days. Of course, before we start today's video, we have to do this week's sweaty shout out. And this week it goes to mona.lisa.wannabe who sent this tweet. If you want to get a shout out for yourself, all you have to do is subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram and then DM me your favorite meme of the week and you might get chosen. Now I noticed that most people found out about this movie either through TikTok or just like in general on the Netflix trending tab. Personally, I hadn't come across the movie until my friend messaged me and was like, you need to check out this movie, like it's an absolute shit show. To which I went into the first 20 minutes not knowing what to expect and was pretty shocked at what the movie was actually about. After tweeting about it though, it seemed like a lot of people had some pretty interesting thoughts on the movie. So I thought it might be interesting to watch the rest of it on camera and give my thoughts. Before we get into the video though, I did want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, which is Raycon. If you guys aren't new to my channel, you probably know I'm a pretty big fan of Raycon. They offer wireless earbuds that don't just sound great, but also fit great too, because they've got a variety of fit options. The best part though, is that Raycon earbuds started about half the price as any other premium wireless earbuds on the market, yet they sound just as amazing as other top audio brands, you know. Raycons are great for working from home, listening to music or podcasts for hours. And personally for me, I like to listen to rain sounds or guided meditation at night to help me sleep and I specifically like the Raycon earbuds because there's no wires so I don't have to worry about waking up the next morning being like strangled by a headphone wire or something and since the compact carrying case can actually charge the earbuds four times on a single charge I also don't have to worry about them dying on me quickly their everyday E25 earbuds though are their best model yet with six hours of playtime seamless bluetooth pairing more bass and a more compact design that gives you a nice noise isolating fit and it also comes in new fun colors so if you want to check out Raycon for yourself you can click the link in the description box below to get 15% off of your order which is by raycon.com slash thanks again to Raycon for sponsoring now let's get back to the video hello hello the first 45 seconds of this movie is just each company introducing themselves but there's way more than what you typically see in a movie like in theaters so it's just companies introducing themselves back to back to back to back hey circa 20 rifugiati solo ragazzi i know we should be paying attention to the fact that those guys are trying to like traffic young refugee girls but the other guy in the back looks like it's taking every fiber of his being to not just break out in a dance right now. The guy in the back looks like he's from Love Island. Mario. I'm slightly confused because the Mario guy literally just sits down at this table and like slightly loosens his tie and then doesn't do anything. And then the other guy is just standing there with his binoculars doing nothing. Yes, I was standing over there about a second ago, but now I'm over here. And I'm holding binoculars. I don't think I've ever seen somebody clench their jaw that aggressively while holding binoculars. My jaw's about to break. Okay, let me get this straight. They're in an abandoned area. Like they set the scene as like this lone building. No one else is there. And he's like looking out at the sea and there's some random girl just dancing. I'm probably not supposed to be here, but like girls just wanna have fun. I don't enjoy it, one day you will also have to turn down a refugee trafficking situation. Get excited. Are they both dead? Hold on a second. So when he was looking through his binoculars, he was looking down at a girl on the beach, like on sand right before the water. But when they pan out, there's no sand. Where the fuck is the sand? To you. Why the hell is this guy singing like that? It's like every word has to end with like I'm not here, you're alone. This conversation is over. You can tell that that guy probably only has one line in this whole movie because he just acted the shit out of that one line. This conversation is over. This is America. So far this just kind of looks like a running perfume ad. Every time you wanna Again? <laughs> I'm noticing that this movie has very similar structure to the after movie in the sense that it would be like 10 to 15 seconds of dialogue and then a long ass song with a bunch of montages of like drone shots and then there would be a bit more dialogue and then they go back to drone shots and more pointless music. I will hand it to after though, they made sure that every time that there was a montage it was to a different song playing in the background versus 
so far this movie has had like four montages and it's still the same grunting song. Zresztą chyba jeszcze nas nie spakowałaś, prawda? She's about to lose her shit right now. I am back for us yet? I will fucking kill you! Twelku, no, żyje proza. Ilostra, kontejner, króla koka. Is anyone gonna say anything? I think I get it now. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that they're being awkward and quiet because the guy's implying that the stewardess took the container of cocaine. So now the guy's like going to the back to like kill her or something. Never mind. Hold a second. That's not what's happening right now. Yeah, that was. Um. <laughs> so I don't think I can show what I just watched on screen right now and I kind of don't want to because it was just really uncomfortable to watch. Um, but there's a point at which it looks at least, okay, my frame of mind was I thought he was going to the back to kill her and it got to the point where I was like, oh, maybe he is trying to kill her. But because this movie is supposed to be like Fifty Shades of Grey, instead of like killing her with a gun, he's going to kill her with his penis but I don't think that's what happened. Okay, yeah, apparently I was wrong because she's very much alive. So I guess she didn't take the cocaine, which is a plus, which means that whole scene before where they were being like super awkward in the plane makes absolutely no sense. And also it makes even less sense because the guy literally was like, someone took our cocaine. And instead of the guy being like, oh my God, who? He's like, I'm just gonna go to the back now. I love how instead of giving the main character's friend a personality by chance, they just were like, how about you just hold a phone up obnoxiously the entire scene? Are you lost, baby girl? What? We'll get to that line in a second, but all I can think of when I watch this scene is how fast would he have had to been walking behind her for him to follow her close enough that he could fully stop with enough time for her to turn around and he's like right there behind her. This guy had to be like moving behind her in order to make up that much time. Now that I've gotten that out of the way, what the fuck did he just say? It was I saw a tweet where somebody was comparing him to the map from Dora, which objective wise makes sense because they're both trying to figure out where she's going, but I feel like in terms of mannerisms, he's more in line with Swiper. How you lost, baby girl? Swiper, no swiping. Swiper, no swiping. Like, I get the point of this movie is it's supposed to be very, like, sensual and sexy, but who do you think you are? Shamar Moore? You just met her. Music montage again, everybody. Like, fucking clockwork. Whoa. So typically this would be the point of the movie where you're like, oh, this has turned into a thriller and that main guy is actually the creepy bad guy. Um, but apparently he's, he's not. We're supposed to be like, oh, that's cute. Can you imagine being kidnapped and there is a massive portrait of you in the house? Like, I would lose my shit. I'd also be even more mad if they did a bad job on it, but that's, like, that's not the point. It's just killing me that so far this movie is a textbook thriller but they're trying to spin it as a romance because the main guy has good hair. Are you lost, baby girl? Why does he keep saying that? It's so creepy. I don't like this. Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? You just got kidnapped. Throw a fucking punch. We're officially all screwed. We're not, we're not getting out of this. We collectively with this girl, we're all fucked, okay? We're not getting out of this situation. You had the bad reaction I hate to this sedative. so much. If you do not spit that ice cube in his face, I swear to God. <laughs> Suck at yourself. Yes, finally. Get it. Or don't get it. <laughs> Sit down. I'm not your property. Sit what? the fuck down. I love it like 10 seconds ago, he was like super concerned about her heart problem and that she was okay. And then the second that she stops cooperating, he's like, fine, fuck it. I will roundhouse slam you into this couch and I'm not gonna feel sorry about it. Somewhere inside me, I had this feeling of certainty that one day you will stand in front of me and be mine. Can we be honest for a second? If we put creepy music behind this scene, 
Like, it's still terrifying, like, even with this, like, violin shit, but it would be even creepier if we put creepy music behind it, which is what it deserves. But that's why I'm giving you a chance to fall in love with me. Not because I made you do it. Because you will want to. Oh my god, guys, I am so embarrassed right now. I I got it completely wrong. He's the nice guy. He's He's kidnapped her, but it's through her own free will that she's gonna fall in love with him, even though she's kidnapped and can't leave. So I kindly ask you to let me the fuck out. This is completely unrelated, but I really like those rugs in the background, they're very pretty. How many black envelopes does this guy have? I can barely see that picture, what is going on? Oh, oh, okay. I can't show that. <laughs> so he cheated on her and like in the envelope was a picture of him like, having sex with another woman. I get it's on purpose that they do this because it's supposed to be like a sexual movie, but like every single time that she's like trying to run away and he grabs her, she immediately is like titties. Which again, I get is the point of the movie because they're trying to like make everything super sexual, but it doesn't make sense like watching it. Like if you're running away from someone and someone grabs you, the last thing you're gonna do is like be like, expose myself like instead you'd be like let me like try to like fight you and so she literally is like ah and that's it i won't do anything without your permission you say as you have your hand on her boob did i hear consent no no i didn't okay just just checking all i can think of when i'm watching this is like this plot is the most extreme case of those situations where like a guy will have one traumatic thing happen to him and then he'll proceed to just ruin the lives of every girl that he's ever been with and then we'll use that as the excuse as to why he's a terrible human being. Like when you dumb down this guy's logic, it's basically a guy going, my dad died and that was very traumatic and this girl that I saw right when my dad died, I've now suddenly decided is the one I'm going to kidnap and then continue to keep hostage for a year until she falls in love with me. I'll do anything so you can fall in love with me. Except treat you like a normal human being. Why does this guy have so many dungeons? Is this them trying to establish him as like a nice bad guy? I have to be honest, I don't really think the music for the scene is terribly accurate. Much better. Oh my fucking god, why does this girl keep fainting? Like, how are you gonna get out of here if you can't fucking get your shit together? We don't forgive it. He killed himself with what he'd been doing. She's like, you know what? I'm just gonna go back to bed and pray that this is all a fucking nightmare. Because what the fuck? You have people for everything. It's, it's one of the advantages of being a boss. How do they act out these scenes with a straight face? Like, <laughs> I'm about to say something very controversial, but I think there is room to argue that these two people are as good of actors as like the typical top tier actors that are talked about in Hollywood, simply because they're able to get through this dialogue without pissing their pants. What are you talking about? I'm not flying anywhere unless it's Poland. It wasn't an offer. It was an order. I love how this guy's whole shtick is that he's a good guy because he doesn't traffic women, but he's just about to traffic a woman. Listen to me. I'm not a bag of potatoes. Yeah, neither am I. Feminism. Get out. Get out or else, else I- Else what? Sorry to interrupt, but didn't you say- I won't do anything without your permission. Oh, so you did say that. Just checking. If she faints while she's running away, I will kill somebody. Are you lost, baby girl? How many times do we have to tell you this, old man? She's not lost! To accept the situation, the faster the better for you. One could also argue that maybe you could just accept the situation that she isn't interested. Take part in an adventure that Faith has given you. It wasn't Faith. It was you. What if it was you? Is it true what you said earlier? What do you mean? That you won't touch me without my permission. Wait, how are they having this conversation when he literally just touched her without 
her permission. I like you to teach me how to be gentle. I'm so glad you asked. I'd probably start with not continuing to hold her hostage against her will. Mamo. Tak, wszystko w porządku. Muszę ci coś powiedzieć. Dostałam nową pracę na Sycylii. Girl, what are you doing? This is just clown college at this point. All right, everybody, fasten your seatbelts. We are apparently already entering the Stockholm Syndrome zone. This guy went like, where's the permission? Where's the chicken permission? Can you stop it? What exactly is her logic like doing this? Like does she, I, oh my god, I don't get this. Did you use the bathroom? Fountain is closer. Why is this girl's reaction to everything just doing something seductively? Like if she's angry, she does something seductively. If she's happy, she still does something seductively. If she's annoyed, she also does something seductively. Like why? Why is he less angry about getting rid of Laura than the boat? Laura, where are you going? I'm going off the boat. What are you doing? <laughs> Why does she drop in the water? Also, that has to be the most unconvincing drowning I've ever seen in my life. She's like, oh my god, I can't swim, even though I'm staying afloat right now i truly wish i was kidding when i say that after she's saved from drowning she suddenly is like totally okay with him and is in love with him and holds nothing against him anymore and then they just proceed to fuck all over the boat while music plays in the background for like seven minutes straight and like when i say all over the boat i mean quite literally all over the boat like all over it. Also, we never find out what really happened to the old guy who was also on the boat. Like, he just randomly disappeared and they never addressed where he went. Is this supposed to be like bootleg queer eye? Listen, I get the impact you're trying to make, but you are not the Lizzie McGuire in a Cinderella story that you think you are. Your portraits have been hanging in my house for years. Nobody believed that I will ever find you. Normal. This is apparently normal. I love how we've gone from him having those portraits and her being petrified of them because they're incredibly creepy to him being able to mention them flippantly in a conversation and her only reaction is like, oh, I remember those. Very cute. It's still fucking creepy. Okay, they are once again having sex while music plays in the background. I, I don't know what to say at this point. Forget about Don. She's the best. Listen, I think you're being a little bit overdramatic. Just forget about that girl who just said that she's gonna kill you. Like, and it's actually a threat because she's like part of a mob, so she actually might kill you. Like, just forget about it. And you, my darling, you are the fucking future. <laughs> this is so cringe. Serious question though. Who fucking wrote this? I get that you're like really conflicted right now, but I feel like the solution is quite simple. Mabel! <gasps> Do not tie Mabel to this shit. It looks time, baby girl. How could you? Can you guys just like work out your issues through conversation for once? <laughs> Listen, I get it. But I feel like this issue won't keep presenting itself if you just like talk it out instead of doing this every time you guys get in a fight. Y'all resolve nothing. Is this Rihanna? Or is this like a bootleg Rihanna? Mom is asking what do you do for a living? I'm a gangster. Classy, bougie, nasty. Oh, she's calmer than you are. Why are there so many music montages? This movie's like an hour and 50 minutes, I believe, or like an hour and 55 minutes. There has been a music montage at least every three minutes throughout this entire movie. This thing is better categorized as a music video. <laughs> the 
car is like going 80. <laughs> what? <laughs> Keep in mind that absolutely no one has actually said that she's died yet. Like the guy hasn't said that that guy called him and was like, Laura's gonna get killed. Laura didn't like scream over the phone or anything. Like they actually don't know if she's dead yet and they're already pulling this dramatic ass shit. Alright, so that was definitely a movie. So the movie ends with them not really telling us definitively whether Laura's alive or not. I believe someone had told me on Twitter that this movie was based off of the first book out of a trilogy. So I guess there's supposed to be two more books on this and I'm pretty sure in the second book they had mentioned that she, it's like revealed that she actually was just kidnapped. Um, but if I'm being honest, I probably will not be watching the next movies that come after this. This genre of movie is just not really my cup of tea. If it is your cup of tea, that's perfectly fine. I'm not judging anybody who enjoys it. I think what surprised me the most is that it just trended so highly on Netflix and that so many of the comments that I saw from people online talking about the movie was that people were like, oh, it's Fifty Shades of Grey or After Done Right. When in reality, I feel like this is basically on par or even worse than After and Fifty Shades of Grey. Honestly, I don't even think it's fair to judge this movie the same way you would judge others because they're basically just building a plot around these two people having sex. Like, what else did you expect? I think this movie does do a good job of just being what it is, if that makes sense. Like, they're not trying to like fake being deep or anything like that. Like, they're like, there's not really a plot here. Deal with it. But then again, maybe the plot wasn't supposed to be the plot, but rather the people they fucked along the way. I'm definitely curious to see what you guys thought of the movie if you have seen it. If you haven't seen it and you're kind of on the fence on whether you want to watch it or not, honestly, while there were funny parts in the movie, there was just a lot of overkill and just a lot of stuff that just made me really uncomfortable to sit through. So if you're the type of person that just kind of gets uncomfortable with that kind of stuff, I definitely wouldn't recommend it. Anyways, I really hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. And you can also follow me outside of YouTube on Instagram and Twitter, which are both Casey Ayonzo. I also have a second channel, which is more like beauty lifestyle vlog content. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, I'll be linking it in the description box below. But otherwise, I really hope that you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one.